um, to be used in the way that we have laid them out. Here. Total fund is uh, $642,136.35. And also, thank you. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I, have a, I have a question sort of on the assessment. Sure. Thank um, you. I guess it probably should have been another. But yeah. It's okay. Um, I know that I think it's an important form of assessment, but I would be interested to know how the kids did this year. Um, it would be interesting to, you know, to compare to previous years given the sort of schedule change and the fact that it went to October and, you know, yeah. everything else. And all of yeah. Yep. Well, we actually have that. We're yep. compiling all that for the August meeting. Yeah. Okay. We just thought, given the workshop for three hours. No, that's right. Yeah. 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 So it'll be ready for you. Sure. We had to call Allie off and say, stop, you don't have to do it right now, but do it for August. <laughs> but I will say those math training funds will come in handy based on some of the assessment data that we've seen. Yeah, we've got yes. some work to do. <laughs> It's constant. Okay, moving on. Number five, employment. We have uh, several new hires to review with you. Um, the first is, so what, what we can do is at the end, we'll just go. We can just approve and then we approve yes, all. Yes, yes. Thank you. So Amanda Sapper is um, going to go to Hussey third grade. She um, graduated from Framingham State University and student taught down um, in Massachusetts. Elizabeth Spiller is um, for Hussey Kindergarten, and she graduated from the University of Maine. Alexandra Amacone, that's how you say it, and that's another kindergarten position for Hussey School. We just kind of clumped them by school is what we tried to do. Um, and she graduated from the University of New Hampshire, and she was doing some remote teaching this past year. Sarah Mossman is um, up for um, nominating, nominated for grade four for the Knowlton School. She graduated from Bridgewater State University and she did some remote teaching this year in Rollinsford. Kelsey Murray for um, the Knowlton School for Special Education. And she graduated from the University of Maine in Farmington and was most recently in a tech in York. Cheryl Shadrick is for Hanson School for fourth grade, and she graduated from Tarleton State University, and she was working in Arkansas as a classroom teacher and relocated here this past, this summer. They're in the process of coming. Um, Molly Jacobson for North Berwick Elementary School for Speech Therapy. Um, she graduated from University of New Hampshire and is coming via the Birch Tree Center down in, in Portsmouth. Tristan White for North Berwick Elementary School for special education teacher, and she graduated from the University of Southern Maine, and she's currently in a tech at Hussey School. Um, Sarah Abbott is our teacher nominated for our um, Noble Online Learning Academy. She graduated from the University of New Hampshire, and she is coming off of a one-year remote position for us. Um, Rebecca Elaine, for Noble Middle School, seventh grade science. She graduated from Keene University and was in Plainfield um, and Maxson Middle School in New Jersey. Um, and she relocated here this past year and did some subbing for us um, in North Berwick. Uh, then we have Melissa Denick North um, for the high school for the MP, so multiple pathways teacher. Uh, she graduated from Loyola College in Maryland and it was most recently working in the Gorham School Department in their alternative education program. Um, that would be the English position for multiple pathways. Uh, we have Catherine Duby, who um, for Noble High School for English. Uh, University of Maine graduate and she was teaching at St. Dominic Academy as an English teacher. Almost done. We have um, <laughs> Carly Patterson for Noble High School Spanish and she graduated just recently from Wheaton College. She lives uh, locally. Um, Glenn Hogue for MHA for a special education teacher. He graduated from the University of Maine at Farmington and he was an ed tech at MHA. Mm -hmm. So that, that is that concludes our hires, our nominations for our hires. Wow. Yeah. 
Do you have many left, gentlemen? <laughs> we have one. We've gone solo on the. Yes. So just before you go, how many do we still have a lot of openings? We, we have a or? few. We um we are, are likely going to get a resignation from one of the elementary schools. A teacher notified a principal that they are in um, a finalist for another position in a different district. So we have that. Um, I think Huzzy's pretty well set. Um, I think they're hiring. We have a couple ed techs and one special ed position still at, at Norton school. school. MHA is all set, I believe. MHA is all set. Yeah. Well, the high they school, have a, oh no, they hired an ed tech too. The yeah. high school's still working on a few positions. Um, some of them are just at the very end stages, like we've offered positions and yeah. um, we will be hearing from them shortly. Um, the middle school interviewed today for social studies. Um, and they have one then I yeah. this fancy yeah. position. So we're in pretty good shape for this time of year. We always get some in August yes. anyway. Oh yeah. As long as you're ahead of the game yes. before you get August. Yes. Yes. So those are our positions. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion. motion. Oh, 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 this tag is going ahead. You can be the Go second to next. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept all the new hires. <laughs> I'll second. OK, all those in favor? Second. Okay, we have a few resignations. Um, we have Heather LaViolet from Hanson School, Kindergarten, and um, Colleen Hill from Knowlton School, and she is a, was a special education teacher at Knowlton. We have Brooke St. Laurent from Knowlton as well. She was a special education teacher. Caroline Schwab from Hussey School for Kindergarten. Elizabeth Croston, uh, who taught French at Noble High School. Andrew Elwell, who was um, at MHA for administration, um, and Andrew Watson, who is um, who was our athletic director. Oh, Aaron Watson, yeah. 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 We also have, which, um, hold on, I think, Matt Reed, who was one of our noble virtual middle school teachers, coaches, um, shared with his, his letter of resignation with us today. So. Um, that actually will be okay because um, our numbers were pretty low, not as full as we wanted. So two teachers can handle it just fine. So that'll be okay. Do we have to approve the resignations too? <coughs> yeah. You need to accept them, yes. Somebody like to make a motion? I think you should say no to Andrew Ella. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the aforementioned resignations. Okay. Second? I'll second. Who said thank you? Okay, all in favor? Okay, superintendent update? Sure, we have a few. Uh, we'll start with a student report. Um, Joshua Cody, who just graduated, yeah. graduated has been awarded the Dave yeah. Schultz High School Excellent Award for the state of Maine. One student athlete receives that, and that's for excellence in wrestling. Um, and the national winner will be announced on August 10th. So we're just sharing that out. Very big honor for him. It's great. Because it's, it's a lot of things. It's not just wrestling. It's yeah, yeah, EPA, I'll, EPA, send a, EPA. I'll send the link yeah. in the yeah. minutes. Too. Um, also, just to let everybody know that we um, had some postcards made for the next couple of building um, presentations that we're doing in the towns. Our next one is coming up mid-August and that will um, be another public forum for all three of the schools and then in sep early September uh, we are timing it to go after or before open house depending on when this, the three elementary schools have their open houses so by mid-September we should be done all those public forums um, they will all be taped but we are sending um, postcards home they're almost done being printed and those will go out and on those postcards, not only do we get list the dates, but we also really encourage families to keep looking at the web page for the recordings of those public forum discussions and any kind of questions that they may have uh, that come up. So there's not one next week, Tuesday? Well, there's a planning cut. It's just a get together for us. Oh, that's right. okay. <laughs> I wrote down a quick meeting on my thing, so that wasn't very good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, that's a little one then. And then just a few other updates. Our fleet, our bus fleet inspection went really, really well. Um, we, we heard there were no issues with that, so that's always a, a welcome, um, welcome news for us. We have had masking on the buses as we um, let you up, just provided the update last week 
on Friday with that and from that. This week has been going very well uh, with the masking on the buses. Um, next Thursday, the nurses and central office administration have been invited to um, a Department of Education slash Health and Human Services, uh, just kind of question and answer updates on um, the health and safety, any health and safety precautions, um, basically looking at the, the, the CDC from the CDC. So we, in talking with Amy, Sue and I still feel like we're, you know, we're right on track to open as we are. Um, we may have to mask, you know, we may have to start with masking. That could be something that they say to us when we meet next week, but we don't anticipate any other big, um, you know, the distancing was our biggest you know, hurdle. Hurt, hurdle last time, and we don't anticipate that to be the case right now. Um, but we'll certainly keep you posted when we have that information. So does that mean like everything, including lunches, are sort of back to normal? Right now, yes. Right. Yes. I mean, yes, right now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our just summer programming-wise, everything is going really well. Um, Huzzy School is hosting Huzzy, Knowlton, and North Berwick extended school year or summer programming and that's really been uh, fun to have you know all of those students all at one building the special ed programs are all up and running and going well there um, the middle school is up here at the high school because of the asbestos abatement being done at the height the middle school um, they have uh, a really good student to teacher ratio because they've added they added a couple more teachers in for educational recovery this year so that's going well the high school has reported to us as well that things are just moving ahead there's a lot of um, you know uh, recoup of credits that have been lost so students are coming and attendance has been good and so things are, are rolling that way and same thing with Lebanon Lebanon's in Lebanon it's the Lebanon elementary school that's having it's Hanson School that's having the um, spring work system. Yeah. So they're at Lebanon Elementary School and that's going well too. So we had a couple of bus issues the first day, which is not unusual, you know, with, with timing and it's later than, you know, pickups later than was reported, but that got squared away very quickly. So and we, we have those often, you know, that's nothing. <laughs> it's just such a, Ever, ever changing flux with summer programming about who's attending and when and how. And, um, we do have some remote programs going on as well, some social emotional remote programs in the elementary schools and those are going well. Um, we weren't quite sure how that was gonna to go, but um, participating very, very well and really enjoying that. So those are our updates. Sue, did you have anything else that I? I don't think so. The only, nope. I just want to deal with our commitment statement and yes. our other. That's all. Okay. Oh, just a quick question, and we don't. I don't need like numbers now, but our um, enrollment numbers, like, not no huge fluctuations. We're like, we're looking at the fifth grade, uh -huh. specifically Knowlton School. They're running right now at twenty, which is not uh, unusual. But if we get a lot of move-ins at that grade level, at that school, that could be something that we could be looking. at. So in the garden, getting back to normal though, instead yeah. of the like we had a little bit of a drop because of, you know, the hybrid piece or whatever, the numbers look good. Mm -hmm. um, all of so we had at one point there were about ninety students that were like sort of parents were on the fence about whether they were coming back. The majority of them are regular, coming back to regular sessions, and then we have those twenty-ish, twenty-four kids that are coming through the normal virtual middle school. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I didn't see too big a lump, sort of, or bump in kindergarten from people that held um, their kids back again. They're looking good right now. Yeah. Better than what we had thought. Like, we thought we may have to add yeah. a couple sessions, but we're looking pretty good. I was well, just did they come to... back into the kindergarten or did they come back as first graders? They no, well, I was they asking held. the ones that held them out. Of... No, I guess. Yeah, sorry. Right. It was first grade. So it was the ones that didn't do kindergarten, they stayed at home and did that virtually, and now they come again. No, well, that's actually, actually kindergarten. I was thinking of the ones that held them out completely. Yeah, there were kids that parents just held them completely held back. back yeah. So that so would be right. kindergarten. It so would be like, for kindergarten right now, Huzzy School is at 113 students with seven sections. So that's pretty normal. typical. That's okay. pretty typical. Anywhere between 100 and 120 is typical there. Lebanon is at 59 with four sections, so that's 
that's good. Um, North Berwick has four sections in there at 61. So Which those is a are, lot. They yeah. usually have three. Yeah. Don't they? So, yes, yeah. they do. Yeah. So North Berwick is the, is the high point. Mm -hmm. Right. And then fifth grade at Knowlton is 104 students with five sections. So that's the one we're, we're watching. Four sections in Lebanon with 72 students. And I don't have North Berwick's down here yet. To wait and see what happens in August. <laughs> yeah, the other thing to put on the radar for you is that um, the vaccinations, we used to be able to have a waiver for um, religious reasons. Um, and we have about 100 students at the high school that we are working very diligently trying to get word that they are either have an appointment for vaccine vaccinations or that they've had them and that we need their updated documents. These are, this, these are this is not, this is not, this is not, these are the ones right. that were going to be mandatory last yes. year. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we are working really hard to. So just at the high school. Right. That's, that's the concern right now is at the high school. And we usually have a, a deadline and kindergarten, we have a deadline as well, but it's a little, we can wiggle it a little bit just because of timing of when their birthday is and when they have to get that shot. So we can be a little more, more flexible, flexible with yeah. kindergarten, but at the high school, we're a little concerned about some of those. So hundreds of decent number. It's a decent number. Yeah. It, it, will, it will go down, but yeah. we will have okay. families that we will have to say, if you right. can't show us. Because there's not any religious exception. Or there is not, or, no. no. So, and with that, we may have some conversations about, can these students attend remotely? instead because we have the technology to do that at the high school level it's less able to do that right. well that's going to be tough to offer it to mm -hmm. a subset of kids mm -hmm. that isn't getting vaccinated but not other kids who don't want to get vaccinated for other right there's a lot high there's a lot going on here <laughs> i know aj uh, aj and, and amy Crichton spoke with a family and they came up with a really good plan um, and they're feeling really good about it. It doesn't involve the remote piece at all uh, for their, their child, but she does have some, there was some issues with concerns about getting a vaccination and the response, her body's response to it. So, so we'll just take those on a case by case yeah. basis and look at those, but I just wanted you to know that we do have some outstanding kind of um, things going on with that. Mm -hmm. No, we weren't here. All right, others. Sue, did you have the other? Just, nope, just our commitment statement. Okay. So, um, do you want, do you guys want to talk about that? Sure. So, our, based on our conversation in the workshop, um, we tweaked our commitment statement, and I'm going to present it to you folks. Now I say that, let me see if I find where I'm going here. <coughs> Isn't it always the way? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Our, <clears throat> our thought process out of the DEI conversation that we had this afternoon was that our commitment statement should read <clears> that <throat> we remain steadfast in our commitment to the success of all MSAD 60 students. As a district, it is imperative we examine our role in addressing inequities. Our district-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion DEI framework ensures the ongoing application of an equity and inclusivity lens in all district aspects. This essential work positions equity and inclusivity as the foundation to further the goals of our school district and lead to enduring sustainable change. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> so we are looking for the board for a, uh, a motion so that we can move the commitment statement forward and put it out on our website, as well as develop our flyer, our one pager basically, that sort of outlines the DEI work that we have done in the past and what we did last year and then what we're going forward with in the future. Anybody have any questions or additions? Or... Sound good to me. Somebody wanna make a motion then? Make a motion to accept the commitment statement as Sue read it. I'll second. Okay, thank you. Um, all those in favor? 
Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you guys for putting this together. This is a great document. Do you have any others, Aubrey? I don't know. Thank you. Well, then that just leaves number eight, I guess. What's number eight? Adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's who's saying get out of here? Oh, make the motion we adjourn. <laughs> second. Second. A second. Second. And all in favor. Okay. And we meet again. I think it's that August. It's the night remember. that we have the public, the public forum. We're August, having a meeting that night. August nineteenth. Let me see. I don't. I love my phone. I think it's the nineteenth. Yes, nineteenth. So we have that public yeah. forum first. Yeah. Next and then for anybody that wants to attend that, that on the building projects, and then we'll move right into our board meeting. Right, so we might start a little bit later. Everybody knows right. the committee should know that. I will not be here that night.